Good evening, everyone, and um, hopefully you can all hear me nice and clearly. And thank you so much for coming along this this evening to learn a little bit more about um, our Masters in Peace and Conflict Studies at Ulster University. And um, just to let you know that the session is being recorded, and um, so just feel free to keep that in mind if you want to come on screen and have a chat just to, to remind you that it will be recorded. If you do have any questions for me at any point, please do pop them into the chat bar. And I also note that I have one of our esteemed alumni on the call with me this evening. So we have Manus Kyan joining us this evening as well. So Manus, hopefully you're happy and able to speak a little bit about your experience with the Masters and any um, top tips that you might have for any applicants thinking and making that decision whether or not they should join um, and undertake postgraduate study with the INCOR team at Ulster University. So you're all very welcome this evening and um, yeah I want to just spend a little bit of time before um, we start just to say if you are joining from um, wherever you're joining from in the world you can pop it in the chat bar and let us know um, if you have any difficulties with staying online um, and staying in the call it's sometimes helpful to join via Google Chrome or Firefox. So if you do find that you're having any challenges getting in, then please do join via one of those um, one of those other browsers. And also I see on the call that I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Chris Brown as well, who's one of the teaching team who will be um who also be able to contribute to anything this evening as well. So you're very welcome as well, Chris. So I see that we have Barry and Delilah and um, Joan as well on the call. So please, if you have any questions, comments, or any queries at all at any point, or you wish to have any further information that I don't cover, please do feel free. On the bottom of your screen, you will see a little chat bar. So you can put anything into the chat bar if you have any questions, but also feel free to raise your hands and switch on your mics if you wish to ask me anything or indeed Manus or Chris about the course. So I want to spend just a very short time telling you through some of the practicalities and informing you a little bit about the Masters in Peace and Conflict Studies here at INCOR at Ulster University. We operate on the basis that peace and conflict studies is really focused on the structures and processes of peace, conflict and violence. Our key aim as part of our degree, um, our postgraduate degree, is to really understand what causes conflict, the dynamics of conflict, but also we spend a um, significant amount of time analysing and being considerate of the resolution of destructive conflict. And we've been involved in this programme for over 25 years now, and it's, it remains ever so timely. We know that the, the challenges associated with conflict are various, and we approach it in a very interdisciplinary way. So lots of our postgraduates will come from a variety of backgrounds. We don't require any um, any specialism in peace studies or conflict studies at undergraduate level. So just keep that in mind that your expertise that you already have, we will draw on that and make, you know, and, and utilize that in our in our in our studies of conflict and peace building. We are also very keen at exploring and understanding how to build peace and what makes peace sustainable and what makes peace um longer lasting and more deeply felt in the communities and societies in which we live. As I've mentioned, um, it's a very interdisciplinary course. We draw on politics, psychology, sociology, international relations, history, anthropology, and even further so into, um, into geography as well, and a range of other memory studies, a range of other disciplines as well fit within this degree. So this degree really, um, there's something for everyone in this in this master's. The other thing to note is that we 
operate very flexibly. Um, so depending on your own circumstances, and feel free to get in touch with one of the teaching team and um, feel free to get in touch with myself or Chris is also on the call or even um, the course director, Professor Brandon Hammer, if you want to have a chat about your own circumstances. But we do offer different pathways. So our full time option runs from September and in this instance it will be September 2021 through to September 2022. And it's really a very um, um, very um, busy year in that time. So classes run from September until May and then successful completion of those taught elements allow you to progress into the research element and you will conduct your dissertation um, in, over the summer months. So lots of our current postgraduates will be undertaking their dissertation at this moment in time and that's very much focused on on what their, you know, their passions, their interests and their research is on as well. And we also have the part time option and that works really well for people who are um, have full time work or or have other responsibilities. And that takes place then top modules happen over the course of two years and there's then the option of then doing your research dissertation after that. Then there's also the opportunity to have a postgraduate certificate, a postgraduate diploma, and a range of short course options as well. So you may decide to do a number of those courses um, that we offer as short course and personal and professional development. So there's lots of opportunities to engage in this learning um, in very flexible and open ways. So whatever works best for you and your um, situation. We have a really fantastic um, and diverse team delivering this master's at Ulster University. We now have over 500 graduates. We have, have a tremendous network of, of graduates that have, you know, that contribute to our, to our practices, contribute to our delivery. Um, but our core teaching team really spans our entire school. So as I've mentioned, um, I'm Wara Braniff and I'm on the list there. And my teaching really focuses on areas of radicalization, populism. It looks a little bit at justice and victimhood and also memory work. And also on the call today, we have um, Dr. Chris Brown, who focuses on the politics of commemoration um, political symbolism, national identity and, and so much more as well. Um, but as you can see from this slide, we have a tremendous um, range of, of experts and very practically focused experts as well. So all of our teaching team are research active. That means they're publishing, they're conducting research, they're writing, they're um, communicating their research all across the world and but they're also very much engaged in the, the real life issues of dealing with violence, conflict and peace building. So for example, um, Dr. Joanne Devlin True focuses on migration, minorities, war commemoration, diaspora studies and we also have Dr. Fadama Ash, who focuses whose research and her teaching on the masters focuses on gender, sexuality, and conflict transformation. So there's a span of expertise, and and really, it's it's you know it's a privilege for me to be part of of this team. But it is a really unique learning environment for all of our students. We are able to communicate and and explore our research in a very in depth way with our students. Our class sizes are limited, so you really have a, a really valuable opportunity to engage with cutting edge research in a really meaningful and, and informed way as part of this master's. Um, INCOR is um, a very vibrant and long established research centre. Here's some of our photos from, from past um, um, international visits where we've had um, tremendous um, sort of um, leading figures in peace building 
um, spend time with our students and meet with our students. That's something we hope to really, we, we're doing it virtually at the moment, but hopefully um, as, as the situation improves, hopefully we'll be able to get back to some more face-to-face -face, um, of, of these kinds of um, experiences. INCOR is an active practice institute, so we we are um, very much engaged in peace and conflict research, but also peace and conflict practice. So many of our staff and many of the colleagues that were on the previous slide are very much engaged in the practice of peace building and diplomacy and in, also in, engaged in mediations and and projects that are associated with peace building. We have a international reputation for our influence and for impact. And really, as I've said, it's, it's a real privilege to work with the team at INCOR, um, really engaged and enthusiastic and passionate about peace and conflict research, but also passionate about um, instilling and training and educating a new generation of peace builders. And that's what we recognise in our alumni is that they are contributing to um, a new generation of, um, of really building peace and, and establishing good practice in peace building internationally. We run a series of events and over the course of your postgraduate degree, you will have the opportunity to participate, to, to engage with, and even in the past we've had some of our students leading on those events and and very much deciding on, on the on the route in which those events will take place. So so that's an uh, it, there is an opportunity for you to become very active as well within the INCORE um, centre. So on to the practical elements, and um, I'm soon going to invite um, Manus, and then if Chris has anything further to say, but some practical elements, first of all. So our courses run over the academic year. So for example, a full-time course, as I mentioned, is six modules, 20 credits each, and that's 60 credits per semester. So you will take, if you are a full-time applicant and full-time student, you will, complete three modules, semester one, which is September to January, all of your assessments combined in that. And assessments are not exam-based, to be very clear. There are no exams in postgraduate level on our masters. Um, so it's a variety of assignments, um, but no exams. We have foundations and peace and conflict studies. So this is really the theories, the the key and core concepts within peace and conflict and really the fundamentals. So if, if you have no background at all in peace and conflict studies, this is really, um, it really gives you a, a solid foundation in those theories. Then we move through to conflict analysis and then foundations in social research, social science research. So again, really core modules in your first semester. And you may question why we have a foundations in social science research module. This is a research, a blended masters of teaching, of being taught and research. So we are really focused on building your skills as a researcher and enabling you and facilitating you to be um, um, employable in the future as a, as a researcher as well. So we do have a focus on research skills from the outset. Semester two then from January to May looks like the following. So we move from foundations in peace and conflict in semester one through to peace building concepts and approaches. And then we have a whole, op a whole range of optional modules available to you, um, including memory, identity, and dealing with the past. And we also then have other areas such as social action for peace and justice, qualitative or quantitative methods. So those are your optional modules for semester two. Successful completion of this results in you progressing on to semester three, which runs, as I've mentioned before, June to September, which is your dissertation. And some of you may have written dissertations before at undergraduate level, 
and you might think, oh, 15,000 words seems like a lot, but but you probably realize that 15,000 words for a master's dissertation is, you know, it's 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 very feasible and it's also really enjoyable. All of our master students love writing their dissertation because it's something that they build on um, after completing successfully all of these modules and they can choose an area and are allocated a one to one supervisor um, to see them through that process and it, it, it's a very rewarding experience. If you are completing this as a part time student, um, you have the option of doing one or two modules per semester, but these are the range of modules that are available um, to you. And at this point, um, what I would like to do before I move into entry requirements and fee structure and things like that is maybe invite Manus to say a few words, if that's okay, Manus. Hi, Amore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, guys. Thank you very much for asking me to come back and talk. I feel quite honoured, really. Um, but yeah, I was just like trying to write down a few things over the last few days about things that I was trying to think about and things that I was uh, eager to know about with regards to the course and I, I, I sort of jotted them all down. So if you have any questions, oh, please give me a shout. But um, yeah, I just want to say like I, I attended 2017 to 2018 and it genuinely, I mean, it was definitely a decision that's definitely shaped the rest of my life. It was a, it was a fantastic experience. Um, Peace and Conflict Studies as a, because you may be thinking about other things, uh, things that sound similar to that, but Peace and Conflict Studies as Moira has already outlined is um, interdisciplinary and it involves all these different backgrounds and that actually reflects itself in the class as well. When I was there, there was someone who'd done international relations, history, um, psychology, I myself done human geography. So it created like really interesting discussions with everyone given like kind of unique insight uh, from their own backgrounds. Um, secondly, the topics are fascinating. I mean, outlined here, I just remember doing them and like the foundations in peace and conflict you'll leave with like, because I think they're three hour lectures still, I'm not sure, but you leave very um, enlightened, let's say you learn a lot in those conflict analysis. I'm not sure if Duncan Morrow's still taking it, but it was fascinating, uh, so much fun. Um, you're on, you know, you're looking at all those things that, all the core themes that must be considered in conflict and post-conflict environments, and you really, really get to understand a lot of different things. The, the research as well, there's a particular emphasis on research, which is fantastic because, as Maurice said as well, it sets you up for, for a job. I left um, my master's and shortly after I got a job as a research assistant, got to work on evaluations of charities operating in Haiti and in the wake of like child sex abuse scandals uh, with Oxfam as well, Save the Children, uh, Princess Trust, things like that. Um, you're just proven that you have these skills and that, that in itself is, is quite rare. Um, and also the dissertation is fantastic. It is, it it's speaks like a lot and trust me, when you get to 15,000, you'll wish you had another 5,000 at least. You get so involved, uh, you'll be assigned a really um, helpful uh, supervisor who'll have like particular skills that will meet your requirements um, and it's, it's fantastic. Um, the teaching staff, are fantastic. They really are. They really are brilliant. Like, don't take my word for it. Go look at what Moira's done, what what Grania Kelly's done, Brandon Hamber, and um, Morrow. All those people labelled there before. You'll see they've all written like, books. Moira's done work in the Balkans, Northern Ireland, South Caucasus. Uh, her books on the DUP. DUP. Actually, I'm reading your one on space, memory, and identity at the minute in preparation for September at the minute. That's amazing. Uh, Grania, yeah, they've all done amazing work. But all that life experience, all that experience outside the sort of boundaries of traditional academia in what like that stereotype is, is not present in this course. It's very much real life experience feeding into the teaching structure and environment. Um, it's yeah, for the teaching staff really are fantastic. They're also super approachable. So do make the effort as a tip, I would say, you know, they're super approachable and super friendly. Like I've, I've been calling Moira up two years later, uh, begging for advice on PhDs. Um, and she, she was only too happy to give me it. Um, the teaching environment as well is super relaxed. Sometimes, not, not relaxed to the point of like too informal, but sometimes it can be, as you said, it's, there's limited space and it, it can be quite intimate as well. There's a lot of um, discussion sometimes 
you branch into a conversation or sometimes what we do is you would do a lot of reading and then people come back and discuss the reading or just have a sort of uh, a think out loud session you know what we sort of think um and also yeah so moving on then if you're not from here belfast is brilliant it's a really exciting city i moved back here after years of being away and i, I haven't left i love the place and it's obviously you're living in a case study there's enough sort of post-conflict and sometimes conflict issues to satisfy even the most morbid potential student there's plenty of stuff to be aware of um as a note south belfast is probably the best place to live um also you get loads of guest speakers we had uh, a whole range of people who came in from peace builders uh pacifists uh people who were really active in the uh in the peace movement in northern ireland we also had conferences as part of Encore. Uh, one particular one stands out was one on child soldiers. We had academics over from uh, Canada and all talking about this. It was fascinating. Um, let me actually do uh, my own talk on child soldiers because it was so inspiring, essentially. Um, and also on a pragmatic note, the libraries, the access to everything that you get and the guidance from the staff is, is absolutely essential. You even get taught how to use the library which may sound silly, but genuinely, it's so helpful. There's everything you could ever want in the libraries. Um, yeah, and that's it. I mean, post-course, as I say, there's lots of opportunities. You've been equipped with the right skills. You're aware of um, like key issues within post-conflict spaces and environments. Um, I know a lot of people from my course have went on to work in peace building think tanks in London. I was working as a research assistant. Um, and now I'm going back to do uh, a PhD as well. So it's all there. And yeah, if anyone does have any questions, that, that's all I could really I could really think about. But I really I, I can't stress enough that it's it's unique than in that you're learning about these issues whilst experiencing these issues. You can take a walk around Belfast, see for yourself. You're living in a case study. Um, but yeah, it's it really is. And uh, any tips, just take the opportunity to talk to the lecturers, get to know them. Uh, ask them any questions, look up what they've done. It's, it's incredible backgrounds for everyone. And also follow everyone on Twitter. Um, Duncan Morrow, if you want to understand Northern Ireland, follow Duncan Morrow. Like. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions at all as well, feel free to get in touch. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Manus. Um, no thank you so much. Um, I'm kind of yeah floored by your positivity. Um, it's incredible to hear that testimony from you. So thank you very much. If you do have questions for Manus, please pop them in or, um, you know, send me a message afterwards and I can connect you in because it is, it's really helpful. You're making a big decision about what next with your life. And it's a, it's a big commitment to take on a postgraduate degree. So, um, any help that we can provide in, in helping you make that decision, just please let us know. But hopefully Manas has, has provided some incredible um, insight there. So Chris, yes, I was just about to come to you and say, Chris, can you please um, switch the mic on? And if you have a camera, oh, how can I unmute you, Chris? OK, um, let's see, does that work, Chris? So you should be able to on. Okay. There we go. You Perfect. Sh you should be. Well, hopefully, you'll be able to see, see me we, in a second. We can. Yay. Right. Yeah, Welcome, it's, Chris. It's, uh, no loss if you can't see me. All, <laughs> all I want so to much, do Chris. is is underscore a couple of points. One is the atmosphere on this course. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer. I've been teaching on it maybe three or four years. And the atmosphere, not only amongst the teaching staff and between the teaching staff and the postgrads, but amongst the postgrads themselves, it's a wonderful, warm, supportive, curious, questioning, funny atmosphere. Funny, haha, -ha, not funny, peculiar. Very interested and invested people who sometimes we have great difficulty in getting to be quiet so we can move on to the next point. People are really invested in our modules and this course. Uh, they ask wonderful, intelligent, thoughtful questions. They really do engage uh, with the course content. And I can see this because we often get 
students who have come up from the politics degree, which I've been teaching on for a long time. And the learning they telescope together in that one year in the master's course is enormous. Obviously, they've been growing uh, educationally through their undergraduate degree, but what they do in that in, in that single year is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. A real enthusiasm for learning, a real enthusiasm uh, for research and writing up research, and it's it's terrific to behold. These that's all I wanted to get across. I mean, Moira is doing a brilliant job, but I I just think that the atmosphere, uh, the collegiality on this course is absolutely wonderful and even persisted through the pandemic when we were all relegated mostly uh, to our remote teaching it percolated even through that and you know uh, only a few weeks ago we actually did meet up and uh, did some a little walking tour of belfast and uh, troubles related incident sites and had a, a good social time as well this is a great little course that's all i have to say chris thank you ever so much and um thank you ever so much and again i would echo that with it, it, it's what is special is that and both chris and manis have said it is is the learning environment it's a it's a place where you can test out your ideas you can explore your thoughts and you can do it in a very safe and supportive and um enthusiastic way so everyone is very much part of the same journey as you and it, it's a really special learning environment so if you are one of those people who are coming straight from post or from undergrad to postgrad and um, this is a as is a brilliant place for you to to really develop your expertise your experience and your knowledge um, but if you are if you've been in work for a little while and that's often the case with many of our postgrads you can you know we'll be draw we'll be drawing on a lot of that real life experience as well um, so thank you both chris and manis please both of you stay on the call just in case any questions come up and um, in case i'm not too sure of the answers um, it's so yeah please stay on okay so thank you both and if you do have any questions anyone please feel free to pop them into the chat bar um our entry requirements are again very flexible so if you find that um if you don't have the first class honours degree or you don't have a first honours degree with a 2-1 classification or higher and um, you may well have a lot of experience that you can draw on and very extensive practical experience it's worth a conversation with us so please just get in touch and have a chat with us about that um, and we can speak with you um, individually about your own experiences as well but that's our typical entry requirements in terms of some other um very practical elements we know that our postgraduates are very highly sought after and um, there is a demand for well qualified and knowledgeable individuals there is a demand for people who have specialist and expert knowledge what we also recognize is that as part of our degree and manis has highlighted this is that we do have this strong focus on an analysis research and practical skills that are highly transferable to any specific position this makes you very mobile it makes you very flexible within this globalized job market that we operate in currently um, our MSc alumni, so Manus has talked to you through his progression and his decisions and Manus has had a very vibrant career to date following our, following his postgraduate um, degree with us. We have a range of alumni working locally and that's only to your benefit because if you're interested in gaining a placement or an internship 
or if you're interested in working for an organization, um, those local networks exist. Okay. If you wanted to work internationally, we have so many alumni working for the U United Nations, working in development agencies and local NGOs in places like Colombia and the DRC and um, Kosovo. And again, a lot of our postgraduates have been traveling and have traveled for jobs even during the pandemic. And, you know, we're we're in awe of the work that they do. And but but the special thing is that they they bring it back into the classroom. As Manas highlighted, we have a lot of guest speakers and we can draw on the expertise of our alumni and beyond to inform your education as well as part of as part of this masters. And um, as Manas has also said, thank goodness Manas is here today because as Manas has also said, um, we will have a number of our masters students will go on to pursue doctoral studies and it might be one, two, maybe three, even longer. After completing their masters, they may then wish to move into um, doctoral studies. So many will move on to um, pursuing either doctoral or research positions. And as I said, these are some of the places that we currently have our alumni. Um, so completely wide ranging and located everywhere. And actually, um, you know, if we thought about how many times we're sitting in airports and we met an Encore graduate, it's it's kind of scary. So we do have our alumni are all over the world and they're building peace and living by living and practicing by the the ethos of Encore internationally as well and drawing on all of their knowledge um, in, as well internationally. Um, the benefits then are, and I think these have all been covered, um, approachability, very distinct but also very cohesive cohort of students and students that become close friends even over the last two years, it was remarkable, as Chris said. So we met up with our students for the first time in person because of the pandemic. We met up with them and they had not met in person before that. And they were incredibly cohesive whenever we were they all They, they all knew each other. We had so many um, there were so many activities and WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups. A lot of activities were happening and and they were so well gelled, even though they hadn't met each other in person. It was remarkable. Um, we are focused on small group learning and we really have a focus on encouraging student voice, student participation and student activism within the class. And as Chris says, sometimes that results I don't know, maybe Chris, I need a little more humor in my classes. <laughs> um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, it's, it is a lot of fun and it, and it is very um, thoughtful, very insightful. And everyone leaves learning more so much from every single class. They, the classes are three hours um, and they are workshop based. So there'll be a mix of seminar, small group activity, lecture there's a lot packed into those three hours um and of course a lot of that and i'll move on to it is talking about the the covid situation as well so there will be breaks and lots of opportunity for for safe learning as well um we do have um unfortunately still lots to deal with as part of the peace process in northern ireland and um we do have a lot to learn still from from the peace process and from the persistent conflict dynamics in our society. And we do draw on local expertise and we do draw on our understanding and the teaching team's expertise within 
the local context, but we also have significant international research links as well. We feel that this is a very well designed program of both formal and informal learning, and we feel that there is something in this that will make your postgraduate experience meaningful and worthwhile. It's very much a high quality and it's very affordable. Um, and also you can make this your own. OK. So. Um, where will classes be? Um, our new campus is scheduled to open from September 2021, and we are in the process of transferring all of our degrees, undergraduate and postgraduate and doctoral from Jordanstown to the Belfast campus. Um, however, this is mitigated by the impact of COVID-19. So we are tailoring our move with regard to the safety of all of our staff and students. So just please keep an eye on our social media for that. Um, what I will say is that we expect all of our students to be back on campus. Um, and that might be a mix first semester, perhaps Jordanstown into second semester Belfast, but it will be, we're hoping, and it may be a mix of, and a, a very intense mix of face-to-face -face and um, online. So we're always guided by government and public health guidance at any time. I encourage you, if you do have concerns around um, that element, to follow us on all of our social media channels. We will keep us all updated. But also, you can visit the ulster.ac.uk coronavirus um, website. And in terms then of fees and finance, our courses start from 2021 to 2022. Um, at 6,270, but please do check that on Face and Finance for the latest information. Um, international students, if that is applicable to anyone here, fees are listed there. We also have a scholarship for international students. If you are one of our lucky ones um, and you are an Ulster graduate, you do have a 10% discount and I also want to remind you that um, the student finance is available for the fourth year of study so you have the opportunity to have a personal loan of up to um, 5,500 as well so that's some important information to keep in mind because this is a big commitment um, in terms of classes because I know lots of you will be thinking about working as well to support your masters, like I'm sure Chris did and Manus did and I did. So I did work full time to support my masters. Um, no, you know, no more exciting, but you know, it, it paid the bills for the masters. And our classes run on a Tuesday and on a Thursday during the day. So it's a 10.15 start in the morning with a 15 Chris am I right and with a break in the middle oh I'm you're on mute I think it's three, there are three R classes so if it's breaking 10, in the middle 15. yeah probably to um 115 two o'clock I think okay Okay, so so you're essentially every Tuesday and Thursday, yeah, you're in class. So, um, if you're a full time student, every Tuesday and Thursday you're in class, and um, and attendance at class is compulsory. So if you do have a job at present, you might want to think about just, and you're thinking about making a decision. This these are not evening courses; these are taught during the day and um, 
and we do expect a lot of reading and research and preparation for your class as well so keep that in mind too um we are still accepting applications um my my key point and my key message i suppose as well is that our places on the course are limited and one of the principles of a postgraduate degree is that you're not in a class of 200 or 300 people you're in a small class and you have a dedicated team around you and you have people who understand and appreciate and and really support all of your learning and Chris and I um, as part of the undergraduate team prioritize that as well at our undergraduate level but particularly as well at the postgraduate level one thing at Ulster is you can apply so if this is one of a number of courses that you're interested in at Ulster you can apply to a number of different courses um, but you do have to make separate applications to each course so just make sure you fully complete if there's any questions at all around the application just please give us give us a shout um, Brandon is the course director so his email is here please get in touch with him if you have any questions at all around applying so i suppose just at this point before we close the session if anyone has any further questions or concerns any queries or if you'd like a follow-up um conversation pop your email or pop your email in and i can get in touch with you if there's any other queries, questions at this point, please let us know. Okay, so we do really hope that um, if there's no other questions, if you, we do really hope that you do consider a postgraduate um, degree with us. A postgraduate qualification is is really fundamental and it's it's really a great addition to um not only to your cv but also to yourself and and every decision that you make there after um i certainly would echo manis's statement that it's a you know it's a, it's a really worthwhile investment chris have you got a final comment uh not so much apart from to say uh, there are three R classes if you can hear me okay uh, so it'll be 10 15 to 1 15 with a little break in the middle i was just checking the timetable uh, perfect that's, thank that's, you chris that's how they usually organize themselves but please do make contact with us uh, if you have any questions or queries about this course thank you thank you chris <laughs> um yeah three hour classes and it's every tuesday and thursday and if you're part-time um that will be decided on your options so again do get in touch with us and we can help you clarify that just so you can work out your own schedule as well or if you're a short course as well we can help to clarify that for you when the classes will be on and um, i do encourage everyone to apply if you have any queries or questions or anything at all that um, you're you're reflecting upon or deciding upon, please just get in touch. Thank you ever so much for joining us this evening, and hopefully we'll see you all in September.